Good morning, everybody. On behalf of California State Parks, I wanna welcome you to Hearst Castle, one of your 280 California State Parks. My name is Laura, I'm a tour guide here, and we wanna welcome you to Parks PE, our weekly to bi-weekly series we have up here at Hearst Castle. We got a special edition for you today. It's a little rainy, a little stormy up here. So instead of what was scheduled, maritime momentum, we're gonna do some cottage calisthenics today. So we're gonna go indoors and see what guests got to see when they would be visitors here and guests of Mr. William Randolph Hearst. Now, before we get started, I do need to talk about a couple of safety issues and health issues. You'll notice I have my mask on and that's because the COVID-19 pandemic continues to be just that, a pandemic, worldwide illness. So if you feel comfortable and you wanna keep that mask on, you may do so, but if you, because we will be inside, um, if you feel comfortable not having the mask on and so long as you're with people that you know, you can take that mask off while we're exercising. And I'll be doing that when I get indoors. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now outdoors so you can see my face and also because we're closed to the public but I'll keep that mask, just like I hope you will too, close by, so we'll put that mask back on. When we're done with our exercises today. Other safety and health issues, because again, your health, your safety is our number one priority here. You will wanna go ahead and grab yourself a water bottle. We're gonna be doing somewhere between eight and 10 different exercises today, and somewhere between five and 15 repetitions per exercise. So you'll want to go ahead and take a little sip off that water bottle, or as we like to say up here at Hearst Castle, your own personal hydration station. And if you want to, some of our exercises will be coming down on the ground, find a little piece of carpeting, uh, since it might be stormy where you are too, if you're indoors, uh, might go to an area where there's a little bit more soft rug. If you've got a rug, you can also put your knees. All right, now before we get started, I just wanna talk a little bit about these guys behind me, those lions. These are red Verona marble lions. And Mr. Hurst specifically wanted to go ahead and put lions in front of this guest cottage that he called Casa del Sol. Now we aren't gonna go into the castle today, but we are gonna get a special chance to see where many of Mr. William Randolph Hurst's guests would stay when they were invited here on weekends. Mr. Hurst, just to give you an idea as to who he was, he was a very wealthy, very rich businessman. He was what we call a media mogul. What does that mean? It means he had a lot of influence on American society through various media, such as newspapers and radios, as well as movies. You might think of Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. Mr. Hearst was very comparable to Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook. He had that kind of notoriety, that kind of fame. And as such, he decided to make a childhood dream come true and build here in San Simeon. He used to camp out up here when he was a child in the 19th century. And then in the early 1920s, he began building here. So we're gonna go ahead and step back in time with our suitcases and go into Casa del Sol, the house of the sun on this rainy day. Let's bring some sunshine into it. Now, if you have some items from your cupboard, like maybe some cans of canned goods or something heavy, like some weights that I have here, you can pretend as we walk into Casa del Sol that you've got suitcases, what we call a suitcase carry. So I'm gonna grab my five pound weights and normally Mr. Hurst would have his guests, uh, his staff rather have guests um, luggage taken in for them. But we're gonna go ahead and take our own luggage in, all right? We wanna make sure, bring the shoulders up and back, good posture, let's go ahead and walk it on in with our suitcases as we visit Casa del Sol and do some calisthenics at Casa del Sol. Kind of watch our step here. Look at the beauty there that you're seeing on the outside of the cottage. This is what the guests got to see back in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. And in we go. Wait till you see all the gold in here, gilded is what the word is, 24 karat gold. Where you see it is 24 karat. There are four bedrooms that we're gonna be looking at in the cottage today of Casa del Sol. This is the first of the four bedrooms. Look at the beauty of that ceiling. 
That's a cast plaster ceiling. You got those suitcases in your hands? Get heavy, I understand. Keep them in those hands nice and tight. It's part of your first calisthenic exercise. And we're gonna take a left-hand turn and walk through the guest bathroom. Every bedroom had their own guest bathroom. There's some of the fashions of the day from the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. And you might be wondering, why are we walking from one bathroom to the next? And there's basically an open doorway, threshold there. Well, we cut this out back in the 1950s when we turned the Casa del Sol and moved toward the museum. So this would have been a wall back in Mr. Hurst's day to separate the bathrooms. We walk into the second bathroom that's going to be associated with the next bedroom. There's a gentleman's attire there in the closet with a pipe, some of the literature of the day. We're going to walk on in with our suitcases into this beautiful bedroom to begin a little bit of relaxation, but also a little bit of exercise. Wow, look at that bed and that bedroom here. Now, when Mr. Hurst would invite his guests, they would go ahead and pack themselves, maybe do a little bit of stretching, and eventually go ahead and relax. We're going to go ahead and start relaxing after our long travels, sometimes eight to ten hours just up here. And we're going to take a look at this little gentleman right here as part of our relaxation as we put those suitcases down. You'll notice him. He's part of a fireplace here, what's called a mantle. And he's actually constructed out of cast plaster. And that fireplace is marble. It looks really old. It's based on 15th, 17th century artwork. But actually, Mr. Hearst's architect, Julia Morgan, hired craftsmen to create that. Notice what he's doing. He's shrugging his shoulders. And that's what we're going to do. Now, with our exercises today, I want you to think about your posture. Relax shoulders as I turn my body away from the camera. And we also want to make sure we've got a nice, tight midsection here and tight your knee. We bring the shoulders up and back. And I turn back to the camera. We feel about hip width stance. We're going to shrug our shoulders up and down. Up towards the earlobes and back down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. The one thing we don't want to do is to round our shoulders. So we're up and we're down. Up with the inhale, down with the exhale. And again, relaxing those shoulders after holding those heavy suitcases that you brought in to the cottage. Now, what if some of us can't do this particular exercise because it hurts our shoulders right here by our neck? It's called a trapezius. Well, then go ahead and bring your hands behind your back, grab a wrist, and push down. Pull the shoulder blades together with a nice proud chest and you put your eyes skyward. And that's going to give you a really nice stretch in those shoulders as well. Also helps to improve your posture. Remember to keep that tight tummy and that tight rear end too. So you can do that if the shoulder shrugs are too much for you. We'll go back to the shoulder shrugs. We'll do about 10 more of those, counting down to nine. Count along with me if you want. Seven and six and five and four and three and two and one. All right, shake it out a little bit. Okay. Now, you know what? Carrying those suitcases made my hips a little bit stiff. I need to go ahead and stretch out my hips. Well, guess what? There's a gentleman here on the other side of that beautiful 20th century cast plaster mantle piece that frames that fireplace. And he's doing a little squat. Instead of arms, he's got angels, he's got angel wings. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. Oh, no, yes. You want to go ahead and turn your feet out a little bit. A little diagonal angle, okay? And you'll bring the shoulders up and back. Like the shoulder shrugs a moment ago. And you'll bring the hands out like this with the palms facing towards the sky and your thumbs out. I'm going to turn my body to the camera and the profile. And when you squat, you want to go ahead, hinge your hip, and then come down like you're seated, seating yourself rather. 
And if you can't come down too far, that's fine. You can go ahead and just come up a little bit like that. But try to go down as far as you can to really open up those hips after those long travels and those suitcases that you just carry down. Now, what if some of us cannot do this particular exercise? Well, we can go ahead and simply open the hips again and turn away from the camera and do a hip hinge. What if this hurts my shoulders with the arms out like this? Your arms to the side, and we can just do it nice and easy. Nice. Okay. But for those of you that can do that little squat again, angle your feet out, shoulders up and back, palms out, and we come down just like that. Try to go as deep as you can, exhaling down, inhaling up. And as you exhale down, try to get a little bit deeper with each squat. Now, I've done about five. We're going to go for 10 more to make 15. 10, counting down with me. Nine. And eight, how can I make this even more challenging? I can go ahead and go a little faster. That's right, there's four, and there's three, and there's two. Oh, there's a cardio, and there's one. All right, you might feel like you've got a little bit of cardio workout with that, with those squats. If you need to, reach down by your suitcases and grab that water bottle. A little hydration station for you too. Otherwise, breathe normally. Okay, so there's a beautiful art piece in here, in this bedroom, and it's called a bookcase. It looks like the letter X, and you'll see it right over here. It's a 19th century art piece from the country Turkey in the Middle East. Mr. Hurst loved to collect art pieces, old art pieces. As I mentioned, 15th to 17th century, well, that's a 19th century art piece. And I want you to think of your body like that bookcase, like the letter X. And we're going to do what are called star jumps. So you look like not only the letter X, but like a little star. And you're just going to go ahead and jump up like the letter I with the palms together and the feet together and the letter X. It's like a little jumping jack, okay? If you cannot do this exercise with the arms overhead, notice the shoulders hurt, then just simply go ahead jump out and jump in. So you're half of the letter X. If you cannot do the jumps, nor bring the hands together, or arms overhead, then just simply step out, step in, step out, step in, step out, step in. We're gonna do 15 of these. That's the heart rate's gonna get up. So assume the letter X, nice wide stance, shoulders up and back, arms up, and star jumps for 15. And two, and three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five to go, four, and three, and two, and one. Hello, warm up. All right. All warmed up inside that cottage, single soul. We're going to take a walk through what's called Mr. Hurst's sitting room, house of soul. A little bit of a breather. Grab that water. And we go to one of the other bedrooms, of the four bedrooms here. Let's go take a walk. Grabbing your suitcases and your water bottle. Just simply go ahead, walk right through. And if you want to, you can do a little bit of a march to keep that heart rate up. Wow. Look at the view in here. A little dark we're indoors, but you are seeing some of the best Spanish artwork from the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries. This is where guests would come when they would stay at Casa del Sol, rest their feet on those couches and those chairs that you just saw, and enjoy Mr. Hearst's artwork. It's estimated that William Randolph Hearst, with all of his wealth, he collected somewhere close to 100,000 art pieces. And there's probably 10,000 art pieces up here. So if we leave the sitting room, or the living room, is what we call it today, we'll go ahead and walk through and take a look at our third of our four bedrooms here. 
Enjoy the view. Now, as we come in, we have another beautiful mantelpiece, again, made of cast plaster and marble, framing this beautiful fireplace in the 20th century. Mr. Hurst hired the best craftsmen and women because he hired the best architect, Julia Morgan, the first female architect licensed in the state of California. And so she would have artisans create these. Look at these little guys here. What they're doing is they're holding something in a rotational fashion. And they're kind of doing a little bit of a knee bend there too. And that's gonna be the basis of the next exercise that we do. So think about that little guy that you just saw with the rotation. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a weight. I don't have to do the weight, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab one anyway. And I'm gonna to try to assume the same position as one of these two little guys. Okay. With my bent knees, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my arms up just like so. And then I'm gonna chop down the opposite side. Bring it up and then bring it down. Bring it up, nice and stretch with your arms way up and then bring it down. And again, you can notice I'm putting a little bit of a, what we call a side squat on this one leg. We'll do about 10 to 15 of these. Now, what if we can't do this overhead? You keep your arms out straight in front of you, parallel with the ground, and come down, like a sweeping motion, just like that. Or just simply do a little side rotation if you want. Now, I told you I had a little weight here, and I'm gonna grab my suitcase, one of my suitcases, and bring that up in the air like so, and then chop it. Away. I bring it up with an inhale, and I chop it away. We're gonna do 10 on each side. We begin right here with 10. And nine, and eight. How do we make this more challenging? You can go a little bit faster. Good, and five, and four, and three. Don't forget to breathe. Two, and there's number one. All right, no time to waste. We're gonna go to the other side, same idea. Bring it up to the other side, chop down. 10, and nine. And again, exhale down, inhale up, seven and six, and five, and four, three, two, woo, and one, all right. Well, a little bit of cardio there, a little bit also of stretching, and of course, a little strength. Now, as the camera turns towards the window, you're gonna see this is possibly some more artwork here of grand nature, also 20th century, but based on 15th to 17th century artwork from Spain. And those guys that you're looking at right there, looks like they do a little twist of some sort. They're doing lunges with a rotation. And that is what you and I were going to do next, all right? Now, lunges are a little tricky because they're a balance exercise, and also a strength exercise. I'm gonna turn myself away from the camera so you can see the shoulders up and back, Again, tighten that midsection and then that rear end. And you're going to want to go ahead and put one foot out just like so, and the other foot back like so. Right there, there's your balance. Okay. And you're going to come down. So you've got like a square angle with that front knee and a square angle with that back knee on the ground. And then you're going to rotate just like the guys that you saw up in that window move. And then you come down, up and down. You don't want to, just simply stay like so. Or if you want to make it a little more challenging, come up, as you can see I'm having some balance issues right there. You can go down and up. It's called a split squat. A split squat up and down without a rotation or with a rotation. When you do it with a rotation, it becomes more of a balance. Now, facing the camera, how does that look? Just like so, and you're rotating. So I'm really working my core. This is a core exercise, balance, and strength exercise. 
I'm going to do five more and then switch legs. Two, three, and two, and one. Okay. Wow, I almost lost my balance there, didn't I? Okay. We do the other side because, of course, we're two sided. We had to do both sides. All right. Shoulders up and back. And again, you can just simply hold the lunge like that with the rotation, going up and down like we are. Okay. And here we go. Five. And four, and three, two, and one. All right, we got 10 total, five on each leg. Okay, so Casa del Sol, calisthenics in the cottage. We're gonna continue with that theme and go visit another cottage. Even though it's raining outside, I'm gonna grab my suitcases, pretend I'm a guest who's been invited to another cottage called Casa del Mar. Before we leave, we want to go ahead and take a look at some of the artwork and lamps at the Oh my my, it's really raining outside today. Doing calisthenics in the cottage is the way to go. So we're going to take a real quick walk through the rain with our suitcases. We want to watch our step here in the rain like we are. And then we're going to walk up some stairs here. Maybe you have some stairs that you're walking up to. All right. Got to protect that camera from the rain, too. Here we go through another gold door. Several centuries old. The little 20th century extension line. Woo! So good that we were able get out of that rain. What you're looking at right now, you are looking at Mr. Hurst's living room. He and his wife Millicent stayed here in what's called Casa del Mar, the house of the sea. And this is a very large cottage, but it was meant for him and his family, five boys and his wife. And they stayed here from 1923 to 1927. We're gonna go take a walk through. Mr. Hurst's wife's bathroom and bedroom and take a look at some of the magnificent decor and the sumptuousness of Casa del Mar. Still holding our suitcases, still holding on to our water bottle. As we continue walking through, you'll get to see some hand carved doors from Mexico, depicting all sorts of battles and wars. As the rain, we can hear coming down steadily outside Casa del Mar. Look at that beautiful door. Can you imagine taking a piece of wood and carving that by hand? Well, an artist in the 19th century did that. Look at the detail on that. So unbelievable. And some of the battles being depicted in that particular door. Well, those suitcases are getting heavy, so we want to go ahead and put those down. We're going to come a little bit later and refresh ourselves in the bathroom here. This is where Mrs. Hurst would refresh herself before she would entertain guests, when she would entertain statesmen of the day. In 1929, Winston Churchill was here uh, visiting. They stayed in another cottage called Casa Palmer, and she refreshed herself before going to dinner and greeting him. Now, Winston Churchill was the prime minister of, of Great Britain in the 1940s. And there you saw where Mrs. Hurst would have taken a shower or even a bath. And as we walk down away from the, her bathroom, we're walking into Mrs. Hurst's bedroom. And this bedroom is very special. 
because when she opened up the doors to the bedroom, away from the beds, she would have been sleeping all night long. She could open up the door and see the Pacific Ocean, which unfortunately we can't look at today because of the rain. Now, her floors are embedded with tiles that Miss Julia Morgan, the architect that I mentioned earlier, helped to create. She would hire the craftsmen to make these particular tiles that she would create by hand with her artwork at the Fayance factory in Berkeley. And that little tile that you just saw there is a little roller. And I'm going to put my suitcases down here, much like what we saw in Casa del Sol, where you saw those gentlemen coming down into a lunge in a rotation. We're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to row. We're going to row, just like so. Now, if you want to, you can simply go ahead and stand and row, if that is too much for you. Okay? And we'll do about 10 rows. We're going to row the boat, just like you saw the tile. 10 times, and we'll switch legs to the other side, okay? Or as I said, you can stay standing and just roll like so. Or if you want to get on your knees, you get on both knees, just like so, and row, if the balance issue is too much for you, okay? All right, so I'm going to grab one of my suitcases, which you can do this with weight too, and I'm going to come down, just like so. Again, looking at, the, at that lunge, you want to make sure you've got that nice square knee in the front, square knee in the back. And as I face the camera, I come back down, and I'm gonna go ahead, bring that weight up over my head or my arms, and I'll row to the side that's over here. I don't wanna row to the side so I might hit my knee, okay? So down for one, inhale, exhale for two, do 10 of these, three, and four, and number five, number six, you can go faster if you wish, you always want to make sure you've got the right form. One more after this, and there it is. Bring it on up, switch those legs. Be careful with that balance. Go to two knees or against the other feet. Here we go for 10. 10, count down with me if you wish. Nine, eight, and seven, and six, Woo. five, number four, and three, two. Last one. There it is. All right. Now, if you're like me, you might need a little bit of breath. Get your breath. You might need a little bit of water. So you might want to go ahead and engage with your own hydration station. But in the meantime, while you're taking that breath, we're going to go ahead and walk into Mr. Hurst's living room that you saw a couple minutes ago when we first walked into the hospital. So watch your step, everybody. Look at this ornate room. Again, gold to behold, gilded, gildedness of 24 karat nature. And you have a combination of modern architectural artistry along with 14th, 15th, and 16th century artwork that this was led. This is where he would, with his wife, Millicent, would entertain themselves at night in their own sitting room, their own living room. And one of the reasons why Casa del Mar is given its name, House of Sea, is because when you look out of the windows, which unfortunately we can't really see today with the rain and the blinds, you can see the Pacific Ocean out there. Imagine waking up to that. And we do have to imagine. Now, Mr. Hurst has all sorts of special artwork in here, like the bear that you see there. Actually, a set of bears, a sculpture. This is a 20th century sculpture. And it's called the Bear Charm. Now, the bears are the most prominent feature there in that sculpture, but it's the bear charmer that you see there standing, just blowing a little fruit, taming them, so to speak. And Mr. Hurst loved bears. And he also had a zoo here. He had 80 different species of animals. Polar bears were one of those animals. And bears are going to be essentially the next basis, our basis for the next exercise. We're going to get on all fours. Now, if you 
got some carpet like I do, or some broad area, this is where we go ahead and get to one on the ground once again. We won't be lunging though. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what my profile looks like. I'm gonna come down to a little hip hinge, come down to a squat, and I'm gonna walk out onto all fours, just like so. But notice, I'm not coming to my knees, I'm gonna come with my toes, okay? And what I wanna go ahead and do is hold that pose. So it looks like from the front, like this, I wanna make sure my wrist, elbow, shoulder, all mine. And I wanna just hold the pose like a little bear. Now, if this is too much for you, put down on your knees. And you can pretend that you're a bear, okay? Make sure the knees are underneath the hips, wrist, elbow, shoulders are all aligned, okay? But if you really wanna challenge yourself, come on the toes. Want more of a challenge? Walk sideways. Bears walk sideways. They also walk forward. And I'll have to turn around this way, show you how that looks. So you take your right hand and your left foot. It's the opposite paw from the front to the opposite paw in the back. And you walk. And then you walk back. It's been the same thing. Same thing. Otherwise, just hold that pose. What's called a bear plank, shoulders up and back, no rounding of the shoulders. Keep that tummy nice and tight. Let's hold it for 15 seconds, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, oh, 6, 5, 4, my muscles are burning, 3, 2, one, okay, come on, on all fours and relax a little bit. Okay, you're gonna come up. That's a nice little core exercise. It strengthens the front of your legs and the back of your legs still. Mr. Hurst has some other artwork here that we love. This column that you see, it's full of cherubs. These cherubs are actually 20th century and 17th century cherubs. But again, these are, are 20th century in nature are meant to look like they're older. We love the cherubs. And look what these little guys are doing. They're doing a nice long stretch with their shoulders, just like that. They might even give them their toes and stretching their toes. And that's the basis of the next exercise. Shoulders, up and back, tight midsection, and Bring those shoulders up and over. Full extension of those arms, full extension of the fingers. If that is too hard for you because of your shoulders, just bring the shoulders down, pull the shoulders back, and think tall. Think tall. You don't want to shrug the shoulders, just think tall. So your shoulders are overhead. Otherwise, bring those arms up, reach for the sky, and hold for a count of 15, 14, 13. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, bring it down. Now, another thing that you could have done that I didn't show you is you can swing this arm. That's also stretching the shoulder. So just like little pendulums. All right. Now embedded in this column beneath our little cherubs, we have another 17th and 20th century com com combined eagle with a, with a spreading of the wings into a little squat. And that's the basis of our exercise. So, as a face of camera, nice wide stance, wider than shoulders. Bring your shoulders up and back, tight tummy, tight rear end, and you're coming kind of down, just like so, and spread your wings, just like that. Okay, up and then back down. Then up and then back down. So my hands come to my side as I come up and my wings out like so. What if I can't do it with the arm? You can just simply do the squat, just like so. What if I can't do the squat? My hips hurt. Carrying those suitcases. Well, you can do a nice little hip pinch. That'll open up the hips, just like that. What if this is not enough? of an exercise for you. Well, how about you jump at the top? And you jump, and you jump. Or you can bring your wings back behind you, hands behind your head, and jump, and jump, okay? We're gonna go ahead and do it as a model there in the column. 
to come down. 15 of these. Inhale down, exhale up. 12, 11, and 10, and 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5. Sit back onto that rear end. 3, 2, and 1. All right, let's go take a look and see where Mr. Hurst laid his head. 1923 to 1927. Mrs. Hurst, of course, we saw her bedroom and he has his own bedroom. So we'll take a nice, careful walk through and we're going to begin our cool down here today. After all those squats, we're going to bring that purple through. and look again at the beautiful artwork of Mr. Hurst's bedroom. Lots of Del Mar. Just like his wife. He too also had a front yard view of that Pacific Ocean. He come out of that bed, <coughs> excuse me, and open up the doors and see the ocean. Of course, <coughs> pardon me, with the rain and the shades down, that's that ocean. That's what you can see back in the day. Now there's this little lamp over here. It's a little hard to see. It's dark in here. And again, there's some cherubs on this lamp. It's a gilt ivory lamp. The 19th century. And this is a really good exercise that we can do as our cool down. And it stretches out your arms, it stretches out your back, and it stretches out your legs. So the little cherubs, those little babies, they're basically just doing this for stretch, just like that. So I want you to go ahead and stretch just like that. What if we have issues with our shoulder? Bring it down and just stretch. Otherwise, we're going to stretch. Jason just head on there, straight on. Stretch with the eyes to the sky, arm up overhead. Hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And switch those sides again with my profile. I'm stretching upwards with one arm and the other arm back, really stretching at my back. A little bit of an extension on my back, arch in my back. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. We visited Mr. Hurst's bedroom. Let's walk through his bathroom. And then we're going to go ahead and say so long to you from Park to Eve here at the front door. Let's grab those suitcases. Take a little bit of a hydration station break if you need to. So we're going to walk through and see where the Mark Zuckerberg of his day would have bathed and refreshed himself before entertaining his guests in the evening. How about those horses up there? And Mr. Hurst's bathroom. With some of the fashion of the day, that robe he may have worn derby hat that he may have worn, some of the shaving items on his bath area there. As we walk through slowly, we we'll see some of those same wood carvings that we saw on Mrs. First bathroom door with that intricate carving, that wood door. From Mexico. All right, everybody, as we put our suitcases down, we want to go ahead and thank you for coming out on this rainy day. It's very, very rainy out right now for our calisthenics in the cottages at Bruce Castle. Remember that mask that you have? You want to put that back on after you've washed your hands. I'll wash my hands a little bit later, but I want to ensure that safety to my cameraman and to others around me. Put that mask back on. And we shall see you next week for another edition of Park to Eat. Bye, everybody.